Hello and welcome to our lovely How to Design an Effective InEdco Education Colorado session, uh, session for facilitators. Um, we're going to get started in just a minute or so. We're going to let everybody uh, kind of get in and get settled. Um, but I'm going to turn on the, the lovely um, uh, presentation that we'll be sharing today. Um, and I'll uh, sing some hold music for you if you're interested. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. Actually, what I'm going to do is I like that. I like that. All right. So. It looks like we have 14 watching right now. Oh, do you see 14? That's what I see. All right. So mine still is stuck at zero, so I'm trying like feverishly, like, what is going on? Yeah. So, all right, cool. Uh, well, let's get started then, um, and we'll introduce everybody and say hello. Um, but I want to make sure that everybody on this uh, call today um, is looking forward to and is getting really excited about Inedco 15. Um, we're going to be talking about really uh, a lot of the different ways of facilitating. Um, this session is not meant to say that there is any one right way, um, but that there are a lot of great suggestions um, and uh, opportunities for you to do your best facilitation um, within, within your session or multiple sessions. There are a lot of folks that are doing multiple sessions. So we have a couple of opportunities for you to engage. Um, this uh, presentation will always be available at bit.ly slash effective in edco, um, and it'll show up where you can click on all the links um, just in case we're going too fast or, you know, we blow past. Um, and you can always, and Kim did a great thing where she put the link to the back channel on each one of the uh, slides, but you can also ask questions if you have uh, a need to do so in our Q&A app, and we'll try and hit those as we go. Um, but before we do anything else, let me just introduce myself, and then I'll let everybody introduce themselves. I am Ben Wilkoff. Um, I am the presenter's uh, chairperson for an ENCO 15, um, and I am the director of personalized professional learning in Denver Public Schools, um, and I'm super excited about what's going to happen um, this year up at the conference. Kelly, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, I am Kelly Sane. I am the Director of Educational Technology in Boulder Valley, but I serve on the board right now as the, co the chair for the Google pre-conference and the um, leadership pre-conference event. So I'm working with everybody during their pre-conference time. So we're really, really excited to have you guys here. Woohoo! Kim, what you got? All right, I say hello everyone. I'm Kim McMonagall. I'm Director of Education Technology for Poudre School District in Fort Collins, Colorado. And my role on the, uh, we all volunteer, by the way, on the, the Board of Directors for in EDCO. And I am that chairperson who connects in EDCO and our affiliation with the ISTE group, so our International Society of Technology and Education. And I'm passionate about professional development and using these tools. So I, I'm excited about our conversation tonight. Please join us in the back. Um, share your thinking. Enjoy us. Join us in that Google Doc that's the bit.ly in EDCO 15 so we can get your thinking as we go. We, we want you to be active participants. Share what you're, what you're doing and how you do your PD. Cool. All right. Kelly, have at it. All right, so we're um, really happy that everyone is here, and as you can tell, we are all incredibly passionate about um, professional development and our conference. We just got back from um, Keystone this last weekend and got to see the amazing place that we're going to be hosting, 
it's really exciting to look at the rooms and see the facilities and to experience the amazing Wi-Fi. So we're excited for everyone to come. But what our main focus really is talking about a uh, hands-on active learning conference, and that's what we want to build. We want to make sure that your um, professional development experience as an attendee, as well as as someone who is hosting a session, really makes this active learning. So we expect you to think about not talking in front of the room and um, kind of being that sage on the stage, but being a person that can collaborate and think about how to include our attendees. You know, we know that our that I, I've, of course, always learn better this way if I'm actively involved. So that's how the human brain functions. We want to make sure that you're designing your professional development and your session with that. So we, I know a sit and get sometimes is easy to create, but we really want to kind of think about how we can actively use use our um, attendees and, and get their voices in the room so it's not just you sharing your expertise. Yeah, and I think the way in which we are sort of approaching it is, um, is really has a lot to do with the way that we do that for students and the way in which we're trying to model um, the the kind of classrooms that we would like to see around Colorado, and so like if you wouldn't do it for kids, you know, don't do it for for adults. I think that's a that's a pretty good uh, rule of thumb. Uh, one of the most important things, uh, at least for me, is really knowing your session type. And type. Um, so everybody, when they submitted their sessions, had the opportunity to. Um, to submit a particular type of session. And we outlined um, for each uh, one of those session types, we outlined all of the different things that are come along with that. So if you have a panel, you know, it really is an amazing opportunity for a Q&A from the audience, right? You're facilitating the discussion, but it's from the audience. If you're hosting a conversation, and I'm just going to blow this up just a little bit, because um, I think it's a little small, but uh, the conversation itself, like that's an hour-long session because we want it to be a conversation where you're hosting on a topic, you have expertise, but you're also pulling in the expertise from around the room. Um, we've got a great opportunity for a couple of new session types, one of which is an innovative snapshot. It's a 30-minute um, session where actually they're all clustered in the same area of the of the um, of the building, and you can actually have people going from one to the other. So they're all, um, you know, you you could go to one 30-minute session and then walk across the hallway to the next 30-minute session, or somebody might only stay for 15 minutes. So making the stuff within the innovative snapshot as modular as possible and making sure that the resources are widely available for people um, is going to be really important. Um, but there's going to be lots of opportunity for people to network and to, like, ask you questions, you know, before, during, and after your types of sessions. Now, the workshop itself, um, one of those, uh, uh, one of the, the most important elements here is that the workshop is actually doing, um, you know, work. Like, you're collaborating with other people um, within the session, and it's not a fire hose uh, approach. It's not the app list that, you know, these, this is the, all of the apps and everything like that. Um, and the, the link that is from here where you can click on running a good workshop, that's actually where we got a lot of our resources um, for tonight as we're sort of building through. Um, but it's important that you're thinking about what it means to have a, to run a great workshop. Um, those of you who are doing an Ignite presentation, um, that's going to be five minutes 20 slides advancing every 15 seconds. And so I'm going to be working more with you on making sure your slides ha are well rehearsed and, and practiced and that we have them all so that you can um, actually uh, present and, and it's really, really slick when those five minutes are, are going really f quite quickly. Um, and then the last type is the unconference topic, which is something that we're uh, very excited to do for the second year. Um, where, where you're going to be able to go to the unconference room and just host a conversation um, informally with other people. So it's super important that you know your session type and you're actually um, going to be digging in using that session type, but that you're collaborating with the session attendees, you're pulling them in, having this conversation, and that you are 
engaging in connected learning, whether it's through the hashtag or it's through the app, and we're going to talk a little bit about that later as well, uh, but that you're connecting with your audience sort of in that before, during, and after uh, time period. Um, and so that's something that we would like to do even in this session. We would like to model that. And so as you have questions or as you you have your thinking, um, please do post within either the back channel or in or in the question and answer app. I know that we're you know definitely later in the evening, and a lot of people decided that they wanted to do this um, as a part of the uh, you know the recording itself. Um, but it's going to be important for those of you who are representing the large amount of presenters that we have um, that are taking part live that you um, that you are asking your questions and getting them out there and that you're sharing your stories of what you want the sessions to look like. Um, so that's really important is that you're meeting your own session description and that you know your own session type. Your description is unique to you um, and that people who come to your session, they know what they're getting and it's going to be amazing. So that's kind of where we, where we are with that. Anything you want to add, Kelly or uh, Kim? Well, I think you did a great job, Ben, really reminding all of us about the different types of sessions and that they have a different purpose and people are going to come with those expectations, but you also reminded us that our descriptions are really important. And so um, in our doc for the back channel, it's the bit.ly forward slash in edco15. It's awesome to have each of us just reflect a little bit about why, you know, why is that so important? And I think it goes back to expectations that someone came to your session expecting something and making sure that you have presented what they think they're going to get. Um, it, it's that piece of making sure they feel um, they got the value that they came for, that they really had their needs met. So I, I think it's really important to look at um, our descriptions and making sure that we're meeting the attendees' expectations. You did a great job with that, Ben. Thanks. <laughs> well, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. I think I just um, changed the um, access. Right now, I'm not sure that everyone had access. So if by chance you didn't have access to this back channel, um, right now, please you know refresh your screen and you should be able to have access to this bit.ly. Nice. Love it. All right, let's keep on going. Kim, hon, I think this is you. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm uh, chatting with everybody a little bit about our second big tip, which is challenging learning. So there's an expectation not only that we meet what we said we were going to present, and those descriptions are hard. You only have a, a, a small paragraph to really um, inspire people and invite them to come to your session. So then when we get there, this idea of challenging learning is really about asking some big questions in your sessions and as you present it's a little bit of that chunking idea and again it goes to what Ben spoke about having um, really good instructional practices so if you present something you kind of have that guide of about five to ten minutes of talking and presenting something and then stop and allow your your colleagues time to process and reflect and we really encourage that you you embed that time to use what they're they're learning. So um, some different tools that really help. Tonight we're using a Google Doc as the back channel, but obviously time to process could be things like a Padlet and having um, if you have set it up and put some groups or tables and have the Padlet set up. So there's a general rule is maybe five to seven people in a Padlet and let people um, share their ideas and their thinking and then allow time for that that gallery walk, the virtual gallery walk so we can learn from one or two other tables virtually. So thinking really strategically about where you're going to stop and we hope we're doing that tonight is actually saying um, if you use our share your thinking doc we're, we're hoping you'll go in and share your thinking about how are you going to really challenge 
the learning of your participants? Where are you going to stop and give time for them to reflect? And absolutely, they can tap, stop and turn to their neighbors to talk, but we lose all of that really valuable conversation and sharing of resources and ideas. So having some of these digital tools that allow us to capture it and archive it and give people the opportunity to go back and refresh, oh yeah, that's right, that's where I learned from other people in the session and not only you as the presenter. So think about the ways that you'll be challenging the learning of your attendees and how are you going to manage that with um, your digital tools. So can't wait to hear your ideas. Kelly right. and Ben, any other questions? You no, know, I, mean, I think the the biggest thing for me is is the time, right? Like that's why people come to this conference is because it creates the time and space for actually doing the work and really having the time and space to reflect um, and to to create something like whether it's a lesson plan or it's something that that they can use the next year. It is the fact that I mean that's why they chose to come up to to Keystone this year and to 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 take part in this. And I think and I think that you know making sure that they make the most of that time for processing, reflecting, and building something new. I think that's that's huge. So when you're thinking about how to organize your entire session, is you think of a unit of three or working kind of in a triad. That's the most important part. So when you're thinking about this, if you start off with just walking through or explaining how to do something, taking that time, going through and explaining that, and then exercise it. Have actually someone try that process. Have them um, go through and do exactly what you did so that they are active in their learning and they're taking what you just walked through and explained and applying it themselves. And then have a debrief discussion. The most important part that I love about anything that I'm getting from a conference is the opportunity to really say, all right, now I've seen these different things. How am I going to apply it in my classroom? How am I going to use this with my students in first grade, second grade? And have that time to really talk through and decide. Because I learn so much more by visiting with colleagues and having conversations about what works best. And sometimes you run into those, OK, I tried this, and these were the five things I hadn't thought about. So that debriefing time is really important for everyone in the class and in your presentation to understand how the steps maybe that you had issues with or that you had not thought through the first time you did it. It's kind of like when you you know teach your students, and if you're a middle school or high school teacher, your you know seventh and eighth period classes get it, but but your first and um, second period classes didn't so much. So it's that re really great opportunity to look through those three opportunities to get everyone involved. So I'm taking time and I'm not just blowing through something really quickly, but I'm giving everyone that time to practice it, to play with it, and to talk about how I would use that. Because that's where I really learn. I think our conference is pretty cool in the sense that not only do we have that built into our sessions and we're asking you to build that into your sessions, we have it built into our day. You know, we have, um, during lunch, we have a lot of time for you to sit and talk and continue that debriefing opportunity and make those connections with everyone. So that's kind of what we mean by working that triad. Did I miss anything, Kim and Ben? Well, only that I really like the idea when you say exercise. Um, sometimes it's the idea that that somebody might take your idea, Kelly, that or something that the presenter is is sharing, and they might adapt it. They might just want to use it as it is, but it might be that opportunity to adapt it and switch it up. Like you said, looking at it through the lens of okay, so you just shared this idea of what I'm going to do, but how do I adapt it for my first graders, or how do I adapt it for my high school AP biology class? So I think presenting the exercises, um, it, to me I heard you say they're going to personalize it in how is what Kelly or whoever is presenting going to um, live in my situation. So I, I like the way you said that. So it's about adap adapting it, adapting it, or maybe innovating it, like doing a mashup with something else you know or you want to pair it with. 
and and really changing it up but you might have inspired them as a presenter to try something new and you might just need that one kernel of an idea to take off with. Ben, how about you? Do you have a connection with this? Yeah, so I mean I think one of the big things is that people that people don't come up with just uh, usually it's not just them, right? Like they they would come up with a team, whether it's somebody else from their school or somebody else from their district or even somebody that they just met. And so it's it's the idea of of having uh, of leveraging those people that are in your network, um, whether it's in your you know your school or the people that you just met in the session today, but that you're actually leveraging um, the. Uh, the people around you. So it's not just from the perspective of how do you do this as a facilitator, but when you're also attending sessions, how do you encourage one another to uh, to collaborate and to uh, do the explanation, exercise, and debrief um, with one another? I, I think that those connections are are huge. So I think we're ready for that. Tip number four is just a really important guide about. Who is the focus of your session? And and this one, I, I actually saw it recently at a, a conference, and with all really good intent, the presenter was sharing her experience in her classroom and going on about her story. But what I felt and colleagues around me felt, there wasn't enough space in the session that allowed me to connect to it. It felt like it went on too much about that one person's story. So I think we have to go back to um, really thinking about it from the point of view of who's attending and that they want to connect with the, the learning ideas. And maybe this is a good analogy. If you think of um, Apple and how they create their devices, they start with the experience of us as the user. And I think if we look at our presentations as what kind of a learning experience do we want our attendees to, to have, it really does have to shift the focus from us and our knowledge to creating a shared learning experience where we stop and ask others to to share their connections, their experiences, how they might even change things that you or, or adapt them as you've presented them. So I, I think that's just the main point is thinking about what experiences are you providing that allow our attendees to know to network while they're in your session, that they're product oriented, that they get to create something while they're in your session. And that academically, you're tying some parts of your presentation to research-based so folks can really go back and take that deeper dive after they've attended your session, especially since some of our, our sessions are really uh, short or Ignite or they're, they're little workshop ones. Um, we want to be able to make sure that people can go back and find the depth of knowledge behind whatever session topic you are presenting. So keep the focus on the attendees. That's the bottom line. All right. So I think our, obviously our, our interest in engaging, um, engage, engaging both the, the presenters in, in uh, sort of facilitating amazing sessions, but also, but also really pivoting towards um, saying like the learners and the learning is the, the most important part. Um, I think that actually gets at what tip number five is all about, which is um, you're going to have a lot of different types of learners in your se or session. Um, it's not going to all be the same type of learner. So you know you're going to have uh, elementary school teachers, you're going to have high school teachers, you're going to have uh, administrators in your session. And part of this is being able to differentiate for all of those different needs, but it's also asking what those needs are in the room and how you can better, you know, personalize for their uh, their needs and, and even using the strengths that are in the room to help you to, to better facilitate. Um, but this comes along with, okay, so the only way to differentiate uh, well is to actually, you know, know your stuff top to bottom, 
practiced. Uh, practiced, uh, practiced. Whoa, hey. Are we getting some feedback now? Feedback now? All kinds of good stuff. All kinds of good stuff. Hey, Kim, would you... Hey, Kim, would you... Uh, um, and so... And so... <laughs> I'm sorry, Ben. I, I'm trying. That's all right. That's all right. I think I can. I think I can. Really? There we go. Oh. Got it. Oh. All right, cool. Um, so, th but the idea that we are able to to differentiate for others or or even personalize for what the the needs are in, in the room um, requires us to have a really good control of the the content and the activities. Um, and one of the ways of doing that is actually uh, practicing with others. Um, so there are a couple of opportunities, maybe in your district or even in your school, for you to uh, share uh, your session early. So I know the Highway 21 conference is coming up. There are a whole bunch of like district-based uh, PD that you can actually, um, you know, demo your session for people or sort of go through with others. Um, you know what it is that you want to. Uh, to be doing up at Inedco, and in that way, you're able to try things out that and be more, you know, more of a risk taker um, in trying new strategies. And we're going to talk about a couple of resources to to look, uh, to look at for protocols, or if you're having trouble thinking of what the activity activity is, we would love to help you brainstorm what that might look like. Um, but really, being prepared for you know the wide spectrum of learning that is going to be in front of you and that will be working with you within your session. Anything Anything you want to add to that, uh, Kim and Kelly? Nope, I'm good. You covered it beautifully. It's just about giving that differentiation. Oh, thanks, guys. So my tip is tip number six, and this is about being skill-based and making sure that you are acquiring a skill. When you're done with your session, all of your attendees are going to acquire some sort of new knowledge and they have learned and they've had an experience, they've had something from after your workshop is over. So you could think of this even as badging, as giving them a badge for a particular skill and or just giving them a badge for participating in a conversation and for sharing their learning, whatever it is. But you want to just make sure that whatever you are asking for the skill that the, that the attendees are going to acquire through your workshop is it matches to the workshop type, it matches of course to your description, all of those different things. But you want to just make sure that I came away, I went to the session, I learned these three or four different things and I am good to go. And that's the most important process for us. Hmm. Go for it, Kim. Go for it, Kim. Well, I just I just wanted to stay a little bit on Kelly's session. I agree with Kelly that there are skills that might come out of a session, um, but I like the way you said process as well, Kelly, because some of the process might be um, instructional design and that we, like, you might have modeled something or in the discussion, I like the way you said discussion, and it might be that I use what I learned in how you facilitated that discussion in my instructional design. So, so I might come up with a skill of blogging or um, uh, coding or something that's tangible, but I also might come out with some instructional strategies that I can apply to my um, instructional design later. So I, I liked how you said both things, skill development as well as learning process. I think that's really helpful. And I know that I know that after looking at a bunch of Kim, do you want to mute? Kim, do you want to mute? Yep, I'm on it. So after looking at um, a bunch of the different sessions that we've looked at throughout the year and have been a part participating in, there are a lot of sessions that are not just a tech skill, but it is a process, it is a conversation, it is maybe a professional development experience that you can bring back to your staff. I was very impressed with a lot of the 
discussions are even just what could be a protocol for learning, what could set us up for thinking strategies and being collaborative. And we have a lot of those sessions. And that's why we're called Innovative Education Colorado. We're not just about technology. So it's really important that we look at some of those. I look at the fact that we have a an opportunity to look at some innovative spaces. We have opportunities to bring everyone together in a non-conference session. So it's learning focused and learning processed. And so we have both of those opportunities and it would be really awesome if everyone in their sessions could have both of those experiences as well. Awesome. I mean, I think the, the, the way in which um, we encourage uh, uh, both skill and learning process I, I think is going to be huge in, in our sessions and I think getting to the how of, of how we get this done um, that's sort of tip number seven um, adding resources to your folder so that people can engage in the process of whether that's a, a back channel document or it's a uh, it's a you know specifically you know you're adding the the tools and resources that you want folks to um, to be using uh, within your session and that you want them to be playing around with um, and using the app and the hashtag. So one of the things that I wanted to at the very least talk through was the idea of how you get access to some of the things that that you want to do. Um, so the the couple that I'm circling here uh, are going to be really important. So the um, right here under every single one of the sessions there is a uh, session resources and if you um, haven't been shared on those resources please let me know and we'll get them shared to you um, as as quick as we can um, but if you want to look at all of the resources all together they're all in Google Drive um, and we created the short link I'm just gonna click on it um, you can do the same uh, if you're looking at the presentation as well um, but essentially it pulls open every single one of our session folders um, and you can do this one click click to add every single session resource um, to, to your Google Drive. You click on that one button, add to drive, and then you can open all of them within your Google Drive and see every single collaborative note, every single um, you know, resource and, and things like that where you can, where you can look at them. Um, and then I'm going to go into one that I know has already been populated. Um, and you can start to see, oh, the presentation's already in there, but there are actually two folders that are within these Google Drive, uh, within your own resources folder, that are shared across every single one of our sessions. So all of the collaborative resources for all sessions, you can add anything you want that you think would be valuable for everybody to have access to, which is just kind of amazing. The ability for you to um, to gain in the knowledge and 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 to collaborate with every single other presenter um, is is kind of uh, um, something that's very unique. Um, it's something that that you wouldn't be able to do, um, you know, in another in another session. And so it looks like uh, we may be having some some issues here with the. Oh, can you see my screen, guys? Yes. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So in addition to sort of using the um, the Google Drive folders, um, one of the things I want to make sure that you're you're doing is also using the the back channel. Um, the the hashtag um, is available to you at, at all times. So I N N E D C O fifteen um, in Edco. 15 is the hashtag, but you can also do session-specific conversations um, within the, the app itself. And so as long as you are, you know, typing into the, either the back channel or you're just using it on Twitter um, or, you you know, you're posting something to Instagram or to, um, to Vine or something like that, as long as you use that hashtag, we'll be able to pull it in and continue to have that conversation. Um, if you have not yet logged into the app, um, make sure you do so. Um, it's uh, pretty easy. It's uh, myinedco.zarista.com, um, and you can see all of the sessions. Start to look at it. Um, you know, plan out your your sessions um, in relationship to the other ones that you want to attend. Want to attend, um, but you do have to be logged in in order to be able to see a lot of the things. Specifically, this little thing right here, the session feedback. We want to make sure. Everybody, everybody, everybody in their session 
points to the session feedback and says, hey, I want everyone to give me feedback. It automatically pulls in your session title um, so that you're going to get the feedback, and that way you know how well you are doing, um, and it's a really great way for you to you know, continue to improve and to learn more about you know, your audience, uh, people that are coming to your session. Um, but what we have done is, especially in the workshops, we've built in extra time. So um, even though your session is technically two hours, there's actually two hours and 15 minutes um, because you go through the intervening 15 minutes uh, between a one-hour session and a one-hour session, you know, from uh, beginning to end. So you actually have an extra built-in 15 minutes that you can use for however you would like in those two-hour sessions. Um, we would encourage you to give them a little bit of a break, but also that you would cut them a little bit short and say, go and fill out the session feedback. It's a really important that everybody gets that because um, then that lets us know how we are doing and it lets everybody know, um, you know, lets you know how you are doing as well. So I'm really interested to see how you guys are using the resources, the app and the hashtag throughout this year. Um, it's going to be really important that, uh, that we make this uh, a collaborative space um, that we are that we are sharing with one another. Anything else that you would uh, add to that? Nope, you covered it. You covered it. No, I, I really appreciate, Ben, how much you've done to make sure, uh, to assure that we have um, a feedback loop. It, it helps all of us to become better as presenters and it ushers that our conference is meeting our attendees expectations. So I just think that the same way we want to have feedback in our classrooms and in our programs, it, we really need this. We're, we're all about continuous quality improvement and, and for all of us to do that we need your feedback. So know that we use it and that we strive to improve each year. So I, I think it's that idea that we really use the data and we appreciate it. I would say the. I would say the cool thing. The cool thing this. The cool thing this. Year is that we have we have wonderful opportunity to put everything inside Google Drive and to get all the additional resources. And again, we have an app for continuing our conversations. And of course, we can put things in our hashtag, which has already been going kind of crazy, which is wonderful to watch. So if I wasn't able to attend one of the 200 sessions, because I can't attend them all, I'm able to at least see some of the resources that are available as well. And um, I agree 100%. Finding that time to give that feedback is really important, not only for you as a presenter and for us as um, people who would like to provide a phenomenal conference every year. And Ben, I don't remember if we were trying to work on getting some of this information back to our presenters as well. Is that still the plan? So the the information on on how to uh, add things to the app and and or to the the resources folders is that what you're talking about? Sorry, no. The session feedback that we would get oh, them some information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the way in which we're going to do this is based upon um, which sessions you know get the feedback. Um, we are actually going to be doing um, a, a push of the information after all, after all of the sessions have closed. You know we've closed out. Um, we're going to be obviously analyzing the the data and saying you know this is someone we would want to have as a featured speaker the the next time around. Th these are uh, different topics that we want to make sure that we hit really hard um, the next time because people found it really valuable. Um, we'll also be creating uh, reports for each individual uh, presenter and like we've been doing where we've been sending out um, personalized emails and resource folders, we're going to use the same exact structure and just put the data out there um, for you. We won't publicize it unless you want to publicize it, but we will send it directly to you as a facilitator so you have that information and you can make informed decisions. Is this a session I want to do again? Is this something that I want to dig deeper into and create something new with? Um, there's a lot of opportunities there. And I think that's amazing that not only um, is this session feedback important for us for the conference, but you as a presenter will receive this as well. So there are two reasons why you should be connected into that session feedback. 
Yes, indeed. All right, so now we're really just talking and looking through some additional resources to help you start to plan. Um, and I want to make sure that everybody has access to them. Um, the One of the biggest places that we received um, some great resources was from OETC. They're um, not exactly a sister organization, but we like to think that they're kin to uh, to uh, in Edco, uh, but they have some really great re great resources for facilitation. And if you're interested in looking at different protocols, uh, we've linked to them um, at their teach site. So it's just teach.oetc.org, um, and you can actually go through if you want if you want want a particular um, protocol for doing a specific thing. Let's say it's brainstorming and discussion, and you want to do it with adults. So you check off those two boxes, and you can search. And then you will you will turn up the individual protocols that are specific to the needs that you have for your session, um, and it goes and walks you through. So all of those kinds of things. If you're really looking um, for some additional resources, this is one place um, that's super valuable to take a look at it. Um, and then we have some additional ones. Um, so uh, I, actually, Kelly, um, do you want to speak to any of these here? Just that these were the um, additional pieces that we've put together. All of them are hyperlinks. Some are from OT OETC. Some are from some other conferences. Just we have we are in belief of giving you a myriad of options, and you find the ones that work best for you. I just love the opportunity to look at whatever I'm thinking about and what additional resources, so that I can up my game as a presenter and my experience at an Edco. All right, so we have reached kind of the the end of of the resource sharing and the um, the ways in which we're trying to guide um, what the these facilitations and um, and the sessions can look like. Um, but we we do want to have uh, a lot of input from from you guys, and I know that a number of you. Um, I'm actually speaking to the those of you who are watching this as a recording, um, those of you that, that really um, are still with questions and we want to make sure that there are some opportunities to collaborate, you can continue to add to the back channel doc, um, but what will be really valuable is for you to use that hashtag um, uh, in EDCO15 to ask those questions in a public forum like Twitter, where we can answer the questions publicly, and we can do that can do that all together. Um, or you can uh, you can actually uh, reply to the email the email that was sent out um, that has the ability for for us to all get um, the the same answers and the same ideas. Um, I'm really excited about what's going to happen this year. And uh, and what kinds of sessions are, are going to be available that have never previously been available to um, to our conference goers or or even um, any conference goers? We we'd like to think it's it's kind of a unique opportunity. Um, any final thoughts or pleas for uh, for collaboration uh, that you would like to to launch into, guys? Ben, I, I just really appreciate all of the extra resources, and I think um, between everything in this session, I just take away the idea that in Innovative Education Colorado has to be a different experience in a conference. Like what we're trying to create, and, and we mean this that we have to co create it with all of our presenters is a, a truly a, a paradigm shift in what we want to have happen in our classrooms and we're asking you to partner with us as facilitators to create that shift to really make interactive uh, learning experiences and and I think it's it's just a bottom line is it's no longer okay Kelly you use the words a sit and get um, I, I think gone are the days of the lecture and that we don't learn that way and if we know that's not best practice or highly effective in our learning we just really have to walk that walk at Innovative Education Colorado so we hope to inspire you and invite you to join us on this journey please please help us create a truly unique learning experience 
So as we sign off, I just want to tell you that we are very excited about this and we know that we could not pull off this conference without you because there's no way that we could present 200 different sessions, nor would we want to. So we're very excited to have you be that collaborative partner with us and so excited to share our new space and our new facility and um, enjoy the opportunity to come back and connect with with friends that we haven't seen since last summer and um, looking forward to to that event with all of you. Thank you. We really appreciate everything that you're doing to help make this conference be a, an amazing conference. Awesome. I'm going to put the Google headband on for the last few moments. Um, just uh, getting excited about the, the pre-cons that are coming up. Um, and I would say if you want more people to be at your session, I would encourage everybody um, not only to make their session awesome um, and publicize it on all of the social media, um, but also to, quite frankly, get folks to come. Um, we're really excited. We're already ahead of the game in terms of people who are, are uh, uh, registered to attend both the pre-con and the regular conference as well. Um, but we need, uh, you know, we, we still really need 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 <laughs> What's we that? We still need people to register, so keep it. We going. need you to be an evangelist for for this, and it's important that uh, that we get uh, the most um, uh, the you know people excited about this. This is this is a really unique opportunity, and I'm excited to to do it with both of you and and everybody who's watching. Thanks so much, and uh, I will see you guys later.